In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a very, very important idea in finance, which is the idea of real options. So consider a standard capital budgeting exercise. Okay, let's suppose uh, that there's a project which has a three-year life, and let's suppose it requires an upfront investment of like $100,000, and over the next three years, it's going to yield you $50,000, 50000 50000 now, a standard capital budgeting exercise like this says, hey, if you want to evaluate whether this is a worthwhile investment or not, calculate the net present value and see if it's greater than zero, then it's good. If it's less than zero, not so good. Now, while NPV is a very, very useful metric to evaluate investments, it turns out that even NPV has a flaw, that the NPV methodology assumes that once you undertake this investment of $100,000 at time period zero, that's it. You're going to sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, let the next three years flow. In other words, the NPV methodology assumes that once the project has been started, there are no additional adjustments, no additional things, no additional options that you can avail during the life of the investment, which may or may not be true. Let's suppose that this $100,000 was spent to start a restaurant, and at the end of the first year where you were expecting $50,000, Let's suppose that this restaurant generated a cash flow of, say, $100,000. So now you're like, hey, this project is a great success. In fact, looking at this success, I think I want to open a second restaurant. In other words, I want to expand. I want to scale. I want to scale this restaurant business. The point is that you're only able to expand on your success based on the first initial investment that you made. And the extra value that you were able to get by building on that success, that was not captured in the NPV calculation that you did for this first restaurant in the first place. And that is kind of the point. The standard NPV analysis does not account for the extra value that you can get from exercising different options that you may have during the life of the investment. Sometimes, based on observing the success of the initial investment, you may want to exercise your option to expand or scale the business. Sometimes, if the business doesn't pan out that well, you may want to exercise, if you have that option, the option to abandon the investment. The standard NPV analysis says, hey, if you encounter a situation where, where you were expecting $50,000 cash flow, but instead it's $10,000, and you're like, man, this investment sucks. The standard NPV calculation assumes you'll be like, oh, okay, I feel sorry for myself, but hey, I can't do anything. And you'll go into the second year, and then the third year, there's nothing you can do. But if you have the option to abandon the investment, maybe you don't want to continue from this point on. Maybe you can abandon and make more money by salvaging your equipment rather than continuing the operation. That option to abandon is valuable. And the standard NPV calculation doesn't account for that extra value that you can get from exercising these options. And so what I'm going to do now is show you through a very simple numerical example how you can evaluate a project in which you have the option to expand on its success. And perhaps more importantly, how you can determine the worth of that option. So suppose a project costs $12 million today. Now there's a 50% chance that the project will be a success and it will yield a cash flow of $3 million in perpetuity, or the project will fail and it will yield a cash flow of only $1 million in perpetuity. Suppose further that your required rate of return or your discount rate, which we denote by the symbol K, is 20%. The question is, what is the NPV of the project? The second part of this question says, what if after the project is successful, you can replicate it 10 times? In other words, what if after the project is successful, you can exercise your option to expand on your success? The key here is to realize that you would never want to expand if the project is a failure. Why would you ever want to expand on a project that you know has failed? But what if after observing that it's successful, you can expand on it? What if you have that option? In that case, what is the net present value of this investment? So now let's address these questions one by one. First, what is the NPV of the project? The way that you can think about this investment is that if you spend $12 million today, there's a 50% chance that the project will be successful and yield $3 million in perpetuity, so $3 million forever. If somebody asks you what would be the NPV of the project in this situation, like if the project were successful, what would be the NPV of this project in this situation? You'd say, well, NPV is negative 12 million. And then because three, this $3 million is in perpetuity, the present value for perpetuity is basically the constant cash flow divided by the discount rate. 
So if you'll do this math, you will find out that this will be equal to negative 12 plus this is 15 million. So basically $3 million, right? So this is, if the project is a success, then it is a positive NPV project. However, there is also a chance that if you spend the $12 million, the project is only going to yield $1 million in perpetuity. If somebody asks you, what is the net present value in this situation? You'd say, yeah, I spent $12 million, but I only got $1 million in perpetuity. The present value of one in per, one million in perpetuity is basically just five million. So this is negative seven million. So in this case, obviously, the project is a negative NPV investment. Now we know that there is a 50% chance that this can happen and 50% chance that this can happen. So there's an equal likelihood that the project will be a success or a failure. So when we are asked, what is the NPV of this investment? We say, well, there's a 50% chance that it will be successful, in which case the NPV will be three million. And there's a 50% chance that it will be a failure, in which case uh, it's negative seven. And so if we actually calculate the NPV in this situation, this will come out to negative two million. You can do the math. So overall, it's a negative NPV investment. Put differently, if somebody came to you and said, hey, here's a project, if it's a success or it's a failure, these are the cash flows, would you make this investment? You'd say no, because it's a negative NPV investment overall after accounting for the chance of success and failure and the NPV in those particular situations. However, if the project is successful, what if you can build on the success and say, hey, this is a great success. It's positive NPV. I want to replicate this. In fact, what if you have the option to expand on this success and replicate this project 10 times? Maybe this was a restaurant investment and once it worked in one area, you're like, hey, this can work in area two, area three, maybe 10 other areas. In that sort of a situation then, because you can replicate this investment 10 times over, once it's successful, you will not get 3 million, you will get three times 10. The key here is to realize that if the project were a failure and you, and if, if you know that it's going to yield a cash flow of negative 7 million, you would never want to replicate that, would you? Why would you ever open 10 more branches of the same restaurant that you know is a negative NPV? You only replicate the restaurant 10 times over when you know that it's successful. And so now if you calculate the NPV accounting for the fact that you can expand on the success of your operation, the NPV calculation then is basically 0.5 times 30 plus 0.5 times negative seven, where this 30 accounts for the option to expand on the success. And when you will do this math, this comes out to 11.5 million. If somebody asks you how valuable is this option to expand? So think about it like this. Let's suppose that when you open the first restaurant, the government gave you the permit to start this restaurant, but then said, hey, if you, if you want to replicate this 10 times over, you're gonna have to pay us for that option. If somebody asks you how much would you be willing to pay for that permit, for that option to expand? Well, you know that if you were able to replicate, the NPV would be 11.5. If you did not have the option to replicate, then the overall NPV would be negative two. So the value of the option is simply the difference between the NPV with the option minus the NPV without the option. So it's simply 11.5 minus negative 2 million. So in other words, 13.5 million. So put differently, you'd be willing to pay to the government as much as 13.5 million because you know that if the project is a success and you can replicate it 10 times over, you're going to get a huge payoff from that from having that option to expand. In contrast, if the government said, hey, you know what, this is a one-time deal, you can only start this restaurant and you can never replicate, you don't have the option to expand, then this is a project is a no-go because we know that even after accounting for the fact that it can be a success, we know that it's a negative NPV investment. And so this is the idea behind accounting for the worth of real options. Options can be valuable and the standard NPV calculation ignores and therefore underestimates the worth of certain types of investments. This idea that real options, the option to expand is valuable also helps explain 
why young entrepreneurs start beta versions of their projects. If you ask these young entrepreneurs, hey, are you gonna make a whole lot of money with this beta version of your project? Is the beta version a positive NPV project? The answer is likely no, because you spend hours and hours working on a beta version, which you know is only going to get exposed to a very limited set of customers. The upfront capital expenditure, the upfront time, the upfront money that you spend on the beta version is large and the benefit is little. So the beta version itself is negative NPV. However, if the beta version is successful, if the beta version is successful, you can expand on the success of the beta version to make it a much bigger product. After accounting for that option to expand on the success of the beta, the overall project becomes a positive NPV. And so that is something that the standard NPV calculation ignores. The standard NPV calculation would say, hey, don't start the beta, don't start this software development because you know that the NPV is negative, but what it doesn't account for is the option to expand on it if the beta is successful. And so this then is the basic idea of real options and specifically how you can evaluate in a very simple setting the worth of the option to expand on an investment.